Let me ask you a question. What has happened this week? The picture is a clue. It's the 2020 UK spending review. Just look at these highlights. The economy is down by 11.3%, the biggest for 300 years. Unemployment is up to 7.5% at 2.6 million. Borrowing is nearly 400 billion, 90% of GDP, the highest in peacetime. And the national debt is at 92% of GDP, at over 2 trillion. <laughs> but let's bring it nearer to home, to you and me. How do you value things in life? What is valuable to you? Have you worked out yet what is important? One wise man said, begin life and begin everything with the end in mind. Imagine if you found yourself at the end of life, looking back, what would you say was important then? The world tends to value money and profit and growth. I'm sure you remember the song by ABBA in 1976. Money, money, money. It's a rich man's world. Just look at the words. I work all night, I work all day to pay the bills I have to pay. Ain't it sad? And still there never seems to be a single penny left for me. That's too bad. In my dreams I have a plan. If I got me a wealthy man, I wouldn't have to work at all. I'd fool around and have a ball. Money, money, money. Must be funny in a rich man's world. Money, money, money. Always sunny in the rich man's world. Aha! All the things I could do if I had a little money. It's a rich man's world. A man like that, it's hard to find. But I can't get him off my mind. Ain't it sad? And if he happens to be free, I bet he wouldn't fancy me. That's too bad. So I must leave. I'll have to go to Las Vegas or Monaco and win a fortune in a game. My life will never be the same. Money, money, money. Is that what you think? We know in hindsight that those kind of life values didn't work out so well for them. In this series of talks we've had in the ancient Bible book of Leviticus, we've been going on a journey, a transforming journey into and out of God's sanctuary. Like a time-space capsule immersed in our worldly reality like a journey into a sanctifying space into the presence of God and then living out in service to God and others in the real world in the light of our journey every day we all live immersed in the world's culture and norms. But God's provided a way in the middle of it all to be transformed into his likeness. Like a time-space capsule in this world, we can experience God's sanctifying journey. As we've seen, it starts with coming near, approaching God, in worship, in the good of everything his son has done. For us to be transformed in his likeness and into his likeness. 
and so to live out his holiness in the real world. We've read all the way through the book as if we were entering into the sanctuary and then back out again. But as we come to the end of our book's message, what is its final challenge? In chapter 27, the final unit. It's about values. What do we value? And how do we value the stuff of life? 25 times in the chapter, it uses the phrase, your valuation. Let's read a little from the chapter, Leviticus 27. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, when anyone commits his life to the Lord, it shall be valued according to the sanctuary valuation. And if you commit any sacrificial animal, which can be offered in worship to the Lord, it will be holy. And any non-sacrificial animal, the priest shall value it, and as the priest values it, so shall it be. And when a man consecrates his house to be holy to the Lord, then the priest shall value it, and as the priest shall value it, so shall it be. And all your valuations shall be according to the values of the sanctuary. So, living according to sanctuary values. It's not a matter of, of nearness, as at the beginning of our journey, coming near to God and worshipping him, but a matter of holiness, as a holy nation, God's people, living in the real world, in his world. We've asked before, what is holiness? It's wholeness, living wholly and completely and fully in every sphere for God. According to this closing chapter, our journey through, into and out of God's sanctuary should result in our commitment and consecration and devotion to God. And in every context, in our lives personally, in our families, in our businesses, in our wealth and homes and property, uh, whether inherited property or purchased property, holy for God in every sphere, no longer living according to the world's culture, but according to the values of the sanctuary. How do you weigh what is important in life? How can we learn to weigh everything according to the sanctuary values. Let's look at the journey we've gone on. At each stage, we've been influenced and transformed by sanctuary values. As we enter God's presence in the court day by day, we know we can come near, not because of our own importance, but because we come in the value of the offering of the Lamb of God, God's precious Son. We bring him in our worship as our nearing, the one who brings us near. Our nearness to God is based on the moral glory and value of God's beloved Son. As we approach, we discover another value. Our approach is based on holy priesthood. First and foremost, the priesthood of God's Son on our behalf, but also because God transformed us into a holy priesthood as well, as sons of the great high priest, Jesus, the Son of God. And so we are 
enabled to enter through the veil right into the throne room of God, the Holy of Holies, based on the once for all atoning sacrifice of Christ and through his eternal priesthood. There in the Holy of Holies and in the value of Christ's atonement, we can know nearness to the divine. The presence of God transforms us into the likeness of God. And the Bible says, when you see me, you will become like me. There in God's presence and throne room, we discover something else amazing and transformational. God's revelation is not only about his holiness, his glory, his perfection and magnificence. It's also about his love and heart for others, especially the vulnerable. His covenant is set out on two tablets which present not only his call to holiness, but also his call to love as well. So he says, be holy because I am and love your neighbor as yourself. Basically, the call is to love God with all our heart and soul and mind and strength, which is the essence of holiness, and then to love others. What an amazing value is here. So clear, so strong, so simple. God says to you and me, love God and love others. This is at the centre of the law. And so God commissions us to live out this calling. Not to stay in a holy huddle, to live as a hermit away from the world, but to move out as a holy nation, as royal priests telling out the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvellous light. And because of the challenge of living like this in the real world, God guides us to live in that real world with a pattern of sacred rhythms, living in the light of God's revelation and feeding in communion with God and his people day by day, week by week, month by month. And so we come to live out this calling in the world today and tomorrow and every day in our lives personally and in our homes and in our workplaces and with our possessions, all dedicated to God. A heart and a, a life of devotion. This is what it means to live by sanctuary values. But let's finish with some practical examples based on this chapter on living for God in the world according to these sanctuary values. Number one, every day draw near to God and expose yourself to the light of God's word. Number two, every week enjoy fellowship with God's people and enjoy communion with him and with them. Number three, your family, dedicate your family to God. When a child is born, dedicate the child to God. And then every day, pray for them to discover God's sanctuary values. And others, pray for friends and your work colleagues for their blessing. And baptism, number five, if you've trusted in Jesus as your saviour, 
get baptized to show you're dedicating your life to follow him and to serve him. Number six, the first is for God. Dedicate the first of anything to God. Number seven, your income. Every month, dedicate to God a proportion of your income, either through your bank or through the church collection. Number eight, giving. <laughs> Join the church in giving funds to support orphans and nurse and midwife training in Kamuli in Uganda. Number nine, charity through the church or other charities. Fund a child through poverty or a toilet for a family in Africa or a well for a village in Afghanistan. Number 10, your house. Dedicate your home to God and use it to show hospitality to others in the church, to encourage them, or for vulnerable people and poor people locally. And number 11, your inheritance. Write your will to include a proportion to go to sanctuary values. And number 12, your time and talents. Dedicate your time and talents to God and use them in serving others in practical ways in the church and beyond the church and even around the world. So, how do you value things? As we finish our sanctuary journey, hopefully our answer will be to dedicate our lives to live according to God's sanctuary values. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the challenge of this sacred journey that we've been on. And we thank you that you've designed it so that you can transform us from living in the old ways and to begin to live in keeping with your heart, with your nature, with who you are as the Lord our God. And Father, we pray that day by day we will enter into your presence and that we will see the light of God and sense your voice speaking into our hearts. And that you will prompt us every day to live practically in our real world contexts according to your sanctuary values. Father, we pray that more and more day by day we will come to be like Jesus. And that our lives will shine out your glory in this broken world. For the glory of your name, we pray. Amen.